Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video series, we're recording our first MIDI song in Reaper. This is part two of that series. In the last video, we recorded three tracks, a piano melody, a piano chords, and we duplicated the chord track with a pad. In fact, let's name this track Pad. And to differentiate our different tracks, let's give each one of them a color. So I'll select the first one, the piano melody, I'll right click it, and go down here to track color. Then we'll choose set tracks to custom color, and let's choose a color for this one. This one's pretty good. And the piano chords, we'll do the same thing, but choose a different color. Let's choose something more like this. And finally, for our pad, let's choose something like this. Now each track has their own separate color. So in this video, we're going to record a drum part. Now in order to do this, you need some drum samples. And I uploaded some to the Reaper Stash. So if we go to the internet and type in Reaper Stash, we can go right here, and then we'll search first song. And this file comes up over here, first MIDI song samples. Download this file if you're following along, so you can hear the same drum sounds that I'm adding. So once it's downloaded, it should look like this, with all the sounds we're going to use in this video series. So now we'll go back to Reaper and create another track for our drum sounds. We'll go to the track menu right here, and once again choose Insert Virtual Instrument on New Track. And this time, we're going to choose a plugin right down here, Resample-Matic 5000. This plugin comes with Reaper, so let's double click it, and it looks like this. It's a very simple sample playback plugin. We put a sample in, and we can play it back with our MIDI keyboard. So we can go over here and browse on our computer to find those files, or we can just drag and drop them. Let's go back to that folder, and I'm going to choose 808 Kick right here. And I'm going to drag it right into this window here, and it shows up. So now if I play my keyboard, I hear the kick sample. Now if I play any key, they all play the same sample. On this track, I want to do kick and snare at the same time. So let's limit where this note is being triggered. So go to note start. I'm going to change this to 60. So now it's going to start at C4. So if I play C4, I still hear it. But if I go any lower, it's not triggered. But if I go above it, it still is. So we could change that with note end. Let's change this to 60 as well. Now it's only going to be triggered with C4. If we go above, it's not triggered, or below, it's not triggered. Only if we hit C4 will we hear the kick. So now let's add a snare. And the way to do this, because this plugin only plays one sound at a time, is just add another one. We'll go to this one and copy it. Paste it, and it creates another one right here. We'll go back to our folder of samples, and this time we'll choose the 606 snare. Drag it in right here, and it's going to play on C4, which is the same as the kick. So let's change it to 62 as the start and the end. So now if we play D4, we hear that snare. C4 is the kick, and D4 is the snare. So now we can play both parts at the same time on this track. Now I'm noticing the snare is a bit louder than the kick. We can adjust that by choosing our snare and bringing the volume down right here. Let's go down about 4 dB, and let's hear it. That feels better. Now we can record our part. Let's name this track Kick and Snare. 
let's turn on a metronome, go to bar two to give us a full bar of counting and record our part. And it's going to be a very simple part like this. Let's do it. That should work. Let's double click it. Let's zoom in. And let's quantize it. I'm pretty sure I played 16th notes. So we'll set our grid to 16th notes right here. Then we'll go to quantize it. All notes and just the position. We don't need to quantize the note end. Hit OK. And let's hear that. Perfect. So let's close it. And let's trim this to be exactly on bar three to bar five, two bars long. We'll glue it, then we'll trim it out so it loops throughout the whole song, right to there. Now let's add a hi-hat part. Go back to the track menu, into virtual instrument, a new track. We'll choose the same thing, resample Matic 5000. We'll name it hi-hat. Let's take this track out of record. And this track, let's bring in a hi-hat sample. I have an 808 hi-hat right here. Drag it in. Let's set this up. To note start at 66, which will be F sharp. Same thing on the end. So if we play the F sharp, we hear the hi-hat. Now, if you notice with these samples, they're not velocity sensitive. So if I play it soft or hard, it sounds the same. I want to change that for the hi-hat part. So let's bring this down, the minimum volume to infinity. So now if I play soft, it plays back soft. If I play hard, it plays back hard. This will create some dynamics in the performance. Or accents. Now let's add an open hi-hat. Let's duplicate this one by copying it and pasting it. Go back to our folder and drag in the 808 open hat. And we'll put this at 70, which is B flat. So if I play the B flat, I get the open hat. Now there's one problem with this as far as dealing with hi hats. If I play a pattern like this, notice how the open hi hat doesn't cut off. We can make it cut off by choosing this. Choose the open hi hat and go down here to obey note offs. So now if I let go of the open hat, it cuts off. So I can just let go of that when I hit the closed hat to create the desired effect, like this. So now we're good to go. So now let's record the hi hat part. And it's going to go something like this just eighth notes. And towards the end, I'm going to add 16th notes before the open hat. So it'll be like this. Start up bar two, I'm going to record. Again, it was a bit sloppy, but we can quantize it. Let's double click it. Again, we're using 16th notes right here. So if we quantize it, it should be perfect. Let's hear it. Now 
it's pretty good, but the decay on the open hi-hat is too short. So to lengthen it with snapping turned on like that and do the same with this one. We don't really need this one on the next bar, so we can delete it. And notice, if you look down here, these are our velocities. So I played hard, soft, hard, soft to create a dynamic effect. So let's glue it by trimming it on both sides, glue it, and trim it out to the whole song. Now you're probably wondering, why am I making it so long? Well, later on, we're going to arrange this song, and we're going to turn things on and off, so it's better to have them on, and then just turn them off for different sections. That's why I'm looping it through the whole song. So let's adjust the volume for each part. Let's start with the kick and snare and bring it down a bit. That feels pretty good right there. We tuck the kick and the hi-hat a bit lower in the mix. Let's add one more drum part. We'll add a tambourine part for some percussion. So again, we'll go to our track menu, insert virtual instrument on new track. We'll choose this again. Let's name it tambourine. Go to our samples. And there's a tambourine right down here. We'll drag it in, and it shows up right here. And because the tambourine is on a separate track from the hi-hats and the kick and snare, we don't have to change the note start and note end, because we're only going to play one sound on this track. But I'm going to change the volume so we can add some dynamics to the performance. So if I play it now, It sounds like this. I'm gonna lower this a bit in the track, right over here, and I'm gonna pan it a bit to the right, just so our mix is more spacious, hearing different things out of each speaker. So now it sounds like this. And there's one more thing I wanna do a bit differently. If we go over here and right click, we can choose track recording settings and input quantize. So if we choose that, in this dialog, we can choose to quantize on the way in. So I'm going to choose up here, quantize track, MIDI recording. And we'll choose eighth notes, because the tambourine part is just eighth notes. So what this is going to do, it's going to save us one step. It's going to actually quantize as I'm recording. The only downside of this is that if we're not sure what we want to quantize to, it will ruin the recording. We can't undo it later. So if you're not sure, don't use this. But I'm sure we're using eighth notes, so we should be good. And this should save us a step. So we're going to record from bar two and put down the tambourine. Now let's check it out. And as you can see, it's already perfectly on the grid. We don't need the last hit, so I'll delete it, trim it, glue it, let's bring it out to the whole song. And now it sounds like this. Feeling pretty good. Now let's give these tracks their own color. And to save us some time, let's select them all, 
right click, track color, set tracks to random colors. That'll give us a different color for each one of these. So this looks pretty good. We have some pianos, a pad, and a drum track. In the next video, we're going to add some bass and some synths. But before we move on, we should save this. Go to the file menu and hit save. And now we can go to the next video. Let's go. Thank you.